Hello friends, happy Friday! Jobless claims are falling once again as enhanced crisis benefits fade away from millions of Americans. Joe Biden is continuing to push Congress to pass more financial benefits for Americans that are still financially struggling. Friends, welcome back to my channel. I do post multiple times a day to keep you all up to date on breaking news in Congress. In a video later today, I will be announcing the two winners of this week's Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter the giveaway, please make sure to stay tuned until the end of this video. Weekly jobless claims hit another crisis era low last week as the elimination of enhanced benefits sent fewer people to the unemployment line. First time filings for unemployment insurance totaled 290,000 for the week ended October 16th, down 6,000 from the previous period. This was the second week in a row that claims ran below 300,000. These numbers take on added significance as the filing period covers the survey week that the Labor Department uses to compile its closely watched monthly non-farm payrolls report. Continuing claims also fell to their lowest level since the crisis began, dropping to nearly 2.5 million, a decline of 122,000 from the previous week. Taken together, the numbers show that the United States is edging closer to its pre-crisis normal when it comes to the labor market, though there is still distance to cover. United States companies are suffering through a stifling labor shortage that saw a record 4.3 million workers leave their jobs in August. In normal times, an elevated level of quits is often seen as a sign of worker confidence. Uh, well, he will continue to have calls uh, throughout the course of the day and the weekend, um, as he has over the last several days. Uh, we will provide you details on those as we can. Uh, we have a goal, as Speaker Pelosi conveyed. Uh, we have milestones, and we're working on finalizing an agreement. That's the status. Um, our focus is on making significant progress on that. We've seen that happen over the last several days. Uh, we're encouraged by the shared commitment to get this done and deliver for the American people. But I don't have any new deadlines or timelines uh, from here, nor have we set them from here over the last several days or weeks. As that package that the President proposed initially at roughly three and a half trillion, I think now looks to be cutting, being cut roughly half. We've heard the President say he wants to come back at things later, things like uh, community college, some of the other extending the life of some of these programs that are shortened. Uh, progressives have been saying that now is the moment to be, go big, there might not be another moment. Why does the President think, given how difficult things have been up to this point, that he'll have another bite at the apple? Um, to sort of make these programs more enduring or to include even things that couldn't make it into this package sometimes, something like that one. Well, let me say first, Zeke, that this is uh, this package is on track to be uh, to represent or to direct the most fundamental shift in supporting hardworking families over wealthy in modern American history. Uh, so, uh, and the president's belief, as you heard him say last night, is that compromise is not a dirty word, and that we will get nothing. Uh, if we do not have 50 votes. Uh, the alternative is not a larger package. The alternative is nothing. Uh, so his objective is to uh, continue to press forward, to bring the parties together, to get a historic package done. And I will note that there's a lot of history for this, and he talked about this a little bit last night, but there's history in setting, putting in place a framework that puts in place positive fundamental change. Look at Social Security. Look at the Affordable Care Act. These are all historic programs that have then been built on domestically and whatever however in the current situation they are seen as more evidence of a dearth of workers that is making it difficult for the economy to stage a full recovery in its most recent survey of national economic conditions the federal reserve found employment growth dampened by a low supply of workers the fed's beige book report further said retail hospitality and manufacturing firms how to cut hours or production because of a lack of workers. Companies also reported higher turnover as workers left for other jobs or retired, while crisis-related factors such as childcare and fears also contributed to other problems. The report further noted that business owners are increasing wages, benefits, and bonuses as they all struggle to attract and retain employees. Friends, do you think Congress should continue providing jobless Americans with a federal unemployment boost? Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Friends, the key word for this video is apple pie. If you would like to enter today's Walmart gift card giveaway, 
please click and like this video. Make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and comment below this keyword. President Biden said that he would not support adding a work requirement for the enhanced child tax credit in the Democrats' massive social spending bill, putting him at great odds with Democratic Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia. Biden told CNN News, millions of children are set to be lifted out of poverty this year because the Democrats temporarily beefed up the child tax credit in the latest stimulus relief package. Extending the enhanced credit is included in the Democrats' massive social spending bill. But Joe Manchin, whose support is needed to pass the legislation, has said he wants to once again require parents to work in order to qualify for the credit, a shift that could exclude millions of the nation's poorest families. Joe Manchin has not provided details on what such a mandate would entail, but pointed out to CNN News that there's no requirement whatsoever. Joe Manchin has not provided details on what such a mandate would entail, but pointed out to CNN News that there's no work requirement whatsoever. But many experts said the simplest way to mandate that households work to receive the benefit would be to bring back the credit's earnings requirement. Until the crisis relief measure was enacted, a family with less than $2,500 in earned income did not qualify for the child tax credit, and a single parent with two children earning between $2,500 and $30,000 a year received only a partial credit. The credit was a maximum of $2,000 for each child up to age 17. That meant that more than 26 million U.S. children were unable to receive the full credit because their parents' incomes were just too low. The child tax credit is a centerpiece for President Biden and congressional Democrats' efforts to reduce childhood poverty. They beefed up the credit to a maximum of $3,600 for each child up to age 6 and $3,000 for each one ages 6 through 17 and ordered half of it to be paid in monthly installments this year. Early studies have shown that the initial monthly payments, which started back in July, are already having an impact. The first two child tax credit payments lifted 3.5 million U.S. children out of poverty. The childhood poverty rate was 11.5% in August, but it would have been 16.2% without the enhanced credit. So friends, do you think that there should be a work requirement for the child tax credit? Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you friends for joining me here this afternoon. I greatly appreciate every single one of you who are watching my videos. If you would like to enter today's Walmart gift card giveaway, make sure that you click and like this video. Make sure that you are also subscribed to my channel and comment below the keyword from this video. Thank you so much and have a very blessed Friday.